Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Hewell Hauser, and I know it's hard for all of us to believe, but the holiday season is fast approaching. It's upon us again. And to help us all get in that special holiday mood, we have come back out here to the site of one of your favorite visiting episodes from last year. We're back out in Montebello at Broguer's Farm Fresh Dairy, home of glass bottled milk since 1920. And what we're gonna do is right now, we're gonna take a look at that original visiting episode. And then we're gonna be back for an update that's gonna get us in that holiday spirit because we're gonna be coming back in just a few minutes for a Broguer's eggnog update. Here we go. I'm standing here with Ray Broguer. Ray Broguer and Broguer is a French name. A French name. Yes sir. Now we're standing in front of the Montebello Sanitary Dairy. There's the cow standing out there all sanitary. Why did they have the word sanitary up there? Well, back in the 40s and 50s, uh, it was kind of the N word to use for dairies. There was a, a lot of them, whatever sanitary dairy. There was buku. Everybody, <laughs> there's that French word <laughs> right. you're using. Everybody wanted to make sure that the dairy was sanitary. And there were a lot of dairies, of family dairies out here in this area, weren't there? That's correct. That's correct. Back in uh, the 1920s and 30s, there was my understanding, uh, 20, 27 or 28 dairies in Montebello at one time, all small. And how many are left? One. Yours? For it. Wow. Well, <laughs> here is the, well, here are your customers. Now, they're pulling in here to buy what? Uh, milk, eggs, bread, butter, dairy products. So it's a dairy little, products. kind of a little market you've got set up here. Yeah, the old time drive-in dairy. Howdy, well, wait a minute. You got the milk. Yeah, how you doing? Got Are some you, milk for my family. Let me see that milk. Is that sanitary milk? You better believe it. It's <laughs> it's the freshest milk around here. It's very delicious. You didn't arrange for him to be driving by, did I you? I sure did, but I'm going to hire him for a PR man. <laughs> I've, been, I've been coming by for years, and my in-laws have been living around here in Montebello, coming by for years, and I don't go anywhere else for my milk. Well, now, Ray tells me there used to be 20 or 30 of these dairies around here in Montebello. Oh, yeah, and... Um, we're just glad that this one's still here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should hire him, Ray. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Hugh. Thank now you. there's there's the old <laughs> dairy <laughs> there's the old dairy truck over there. Is this what you used to deliver? The home delivery, yes it is. Back in the oh I guess late forties, early fifties and sixties and a little bit into the seventies and actually this truck here ran as home delivery as far as into the about 93, 94, something like that. Boy, that's a beautiful truck. And there's your name right on the side, independent distributor. And here is the happy Broguer cow since 1920 farm fresh dairy. That's the place. Now, was your father in this business? My grandfather and my father both. Really? Yeah, my grandfather started it in 1920. Did he come here from France? Or? From France, correct. And that's what his family did in France, was dairy farming. No, actually he came here and, and this was, uh, he originally started growing lemons in 1917 or 1918. And when his first crop came in, he shipped them back to Chicago. And instead of a check, he thought he'd get a check for his lemons, he ended up with uh, getting a bill. The freight cost more than what the lemons were worth, so he came back and tore out every lemon tree and went into the milk business. Went into cows. Correct. Now, the cows are no longer here. You told me that the whole area back behind here used to be full of cows. That's correct. Uh, wherever you see the, the parking lot here for the uh, bakery next door, that was all corrals, and uh, we kept the cattle there. Now, where are the cows now? In Chino. We get the milk from a producer in Chino. It comes in in a tanker. We pump it into our tank and still do the processing here. Okay, so the cows are gone. There are no cows left in Montebello. No, the cities, uh, through the course of time, cities really frowned on, on dairies having cows for umpteen different reasons, and uh, they kind of moved you out, really. 
Well, the cows are in Chino, but the dairy is still here. Correct. And we're going to go in and look at what's going on inside this dairy that's been here since 1920. Oh, boy. You got glass bottles here. Glass and plastic both, correct. Now, why do you still use the glass bottles? We think it's the best way to buy milk. Uh, it's, you want to taste the pure taste of milk, glass bottle is the route to go. Now, aren't they more expensive than the plastic? Or? They're way more expensive and way more work. So you keep them really just for your customers because or just cause it's old fashioned or? Old fashioned for one, but we've never, we've been in glass from day one and just think that, you know, there's a, a we fulfill a, a need, I guess, for the people that enjoy it in glass. Yeah. The best way to drink it, really. Now, explain to us what's happening here. Well, right now, the, the raw milk that came in from the farm is stored in this tank right here. Uh-huh. This tank here holds 2,200 gallons of milk. It's being out through here, pumped in to the, this is what they call a high temperature short time unit, which pasteurizes the milk and cools it right back down. So, now this is running, hot. Yeah, the, the milk right now is running at 172 degrees is what wow. we pasteurize oh, milk at. the milk now. Can Correct. we open this up? Yeah, sure. Now that's the milk. That's it. After it's been passed. Oh no, this is the raw milk here. It's coming in from the tank into this, what they call a surge tank. And then it goes And being up. pumped out back in through a line down here. Uh-huh. On this side over here. Being pumped out into the high temperature short time unit, which in turn feeds it over to the, past, uh, the homogenizing unit, which okay. homogenizes the milk. Now, is this the way it's always been done here in this dairy, or is this all modern, state-of-the-art equipment? Well, this one here, this, this particular piece here is new. We put this in about a year and a half ago. My dad, when, when I was brought up, taught me to take care of the equipment, and the equipment will take care of you. Our old pasteurizing unit was 40, about 45 years old, and I took excellent care of it. The problem was the company's during the course of time, obsoleted the parts. Yeah. So it got to the point we couldn't get parts. So you had so to I get had a new equipment. A new one. The homogenizer here, we put this in in 1953, I believe. So it's really? and it's still going strong. Now your workers over here, you've got a continuation of the family right over here. I sure do. That's my son Chris at the uh, bottle filler in. Let's go meet him. Howdy, Chris. How's it going? You're the fourth generation, right? That's what they tell me. <laughs> All right. Now, how did you get into the business? Was there ever any question about you doing this? or? No, I've been here since I was old enough to work here, and I haven't left. <laughs> and he's really, over the years, given you every job to do. You've had to do everything. Oh, yeah. I came up through the ranks just like everybody else. Yeah. Are you glad you don't have to work with the cows? You just get the milk. You don't have to... Yeah, it saves on time, but it was, it was kind of fun when the cows were here. It was nice. And so you remember it when the cows were here? I wasn't working here, but I was here as a kid all the time. Yeah. yeah. My father was here, so I had to be here. <laughs> Let's see. Pardon? Oh, okay, you're putting them in the... Yeah, I'm giving him a hand here. Where I, right there at the end, I jump in every now and then. <laughs> Well, I guess everybody helps everybody else out here, don't they? Well, it's true, and uh, on Chris's end, it's kind of like back when, when I was a kid, my dad started me on the bottom. I mean, on the bottom. And, uh, you know, and then back then we had cows, and now we don't have the cows. And, uh, but Chris started at the bottle washer end, and he's worked his way up. Oh, look what he's doing. He's cooling them down in here. That's correct. It goes right off the filler into the cooler. And then right out the door right to out your the customers. Door to customers. That's correct. What kind of a volume do you do every day? Uh, we average about 1,000 gallons a day, I guess, is what our average is. So a quarts and half gallons. And then if you include the plastic, it's the volume's up a little bit more because we do offer both ways. OK, time has passed. And now we're here for this 
big event that you were telling us about. What are we watching right here? It's the beginning stages of our world-famous chocolate mill. Chocolate mill? Correct. Now, how does that work? Well, uh, it's basically done the old-fashioned way. And by old-fashioned, I mean from start to finish, virtually by hand, really. Right now, what they're doing is the milk is going through the homogenizer pasteurizer cooling unit. It's coming out at about 34 degrees into the cans. These great old cans. These are the original old cans. Yep. You don't see 10-gallon milk cans around anymore. <laughs> All right, then your son is wheeling them down here. Correct. And we got all kind of activity going on down here. Let's see if we can get in here so Louie can get a shot of what's happening, because, boy, there's a lot. There's a lot going on here. What's happening in here? What are these guys doing? Okay, right now, what they're doing is mixing up the chocolate milk and pouring it into the tank that feeds our bottle filler. Uh huh. And everything, as you can see, done by hand. It's the old-fashioned way when we use the uh, one gallon of uh, chocolate syrup is mixed into 10 gallons of milk. So you're actually pouring chocolate syrup into the cans, right? mixing them by hand. Correct. And then cooling it down. Oh, it's cooled down already, but it's just stirred up. We, you know, we mix the, the syrup in with the milk to get oh, the, wow. the finished product. Look at these guys mixing here, Louie. They really know. Oh, boy. Well, look, there goes the, here goes the chocolate. That's the real thing. And then, what do you start doing here? Just start taking it out of the can. Pushing it all the way to the bottom. Make sure it gets down there. Take this out. And just start mixing it nice and slow. Oh, wow. So there's a way to do this. There's the right and the wrong way to do it. It's the old fashioned way. Now, something this simple, you would think that more milk companies would do it. But I guess it's too labor intensive, isn't it? And time consuming, yeah. Yeah. They couldn't, they wouldn't bother with it. Yeah. But we're the, we just never changed. We've always made it in the 10 gallon can. It's called a cold process. And it's just the way we do it, the old fashioned quality way. All right, now is it ready to be dumped now? Or do you, how do you know when you've mixed it enough? When it gets darker and it starts getting lighter and lighter. Uh -huh. First it's dark and it gets lighter and lighter. It's about ready right now. All right, let's watch them dump that. Wait a minute, we're. Those things are heavy, too. They sure are. They're about 100 pounds each, 110 pounds. There it goes. And this goes on how often here at the dairy? Twice a week. Twice Every, a week? Twice a week. You're making your chocolate milk? Two times a week, Monday, Thursday. Now, is this something that people come by just to get? Is your chocolate milk? Uh, a lot of them do. A lot of them, they just love that old-fashioned chocolate milk. I mean, it's, the taste is the difference, really. So it really does taste different. It really does, and, and, and in the glass bottle to boot, it's just, it's how good chocolate milk can taste. We use the regular milk, you know, regular homogenized milk. Uh -huh. We add cream to it. We have the, the chocolate syrup been formulated for us. We have that special made. And as you can see, it's all by hand. These guys love their work. Well, look, he's doing it with two oh, hands. He, this guy's a worker. How? Oh, you're a two-handed guy. I'm a two-handed guy. Yes, I am. <laughs> Boy, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> he's awesome. <laughs> OK, we've come outside. And actually, we're taking a tour because this is where the cows used to be. Do you miss the cows? That I do. It was a. Uh... Part of the history of the dairy, the drawback with the cows, uh, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days. They don't know Christmas from the day before or after, and a lot of extra work. So it was a lot of work for you, but growing up as a boy, your dad had you out there working with those cows, didn't he? He sure did. It was feeding them, uh, cleaning the corrals, you know, you name it. We, we did it. We had chickens, goats the whole nine yards. So there. this was really, this whole thing was a farm, wasn't it? Yeah, it was back in the, well, from 1920. I was born in 1945, so, but 
you know, we had the garden. We used to grow our own vegetables. Um, we, we, we were pretty much, we never went to town, so to speak. Yeah. You know, we, we spent a lot of time here on the farm. Well, it's a parking lot now, but the dairy is still here, and so are the old glass bottles and the old cases. And you were telling us that people will stop by because they spot these old cases and just want to come in and talk about them. They do. It brings back a lot of uh, memories for a lot of people that uh, were brought up during the course of time when uh, you had home delivery and, and a lot of drive-in dairies like this in the past. And they, they see the glass bottle, they see the old-time cases. As you can see here, we got, this is the new, the new case, plastic. Everything's plastic. I don't like that. I don't either. I have as much like wood this. and wire. Correct. You get some of these cases here, I will, I will guarantee you these here are 35 years old. You get into these woods, they're 40, 50 years old. Yeah. They're right on here, 1949. Yeah. Almost 50 years old. Yeah. Wooden wire. It, 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 a lot of uh, nostalgia, a lot of, it brings back people's memories. Well, I remember as a boy growing up in a small town in Tennessee, the milkman came by three days a week, early in the morning. You could hear those bottles clanking. <laughs> yeah, there was that's... cream on top of the milk <laughs> and a little uh, paper top the tab little, that you pulled off. Old tab, that's right. The old uh, cardboard. It was made out of cardboard with a little snap cap, and you just pull the cap up with that thing. We're showing our age. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> now, here's the house. This is where the family grew up, right here next to the dairy. That's correct. Uh, I was born and raised here. Uh, my dad built this particular house in 1953. It's really funny because we, our older house, well, my grandfather, he went to France. He took a tour to France. And while he was gone, my dad tore the old house down and built a new one. And my grandfather saw it, because back then you travel by train, right? So he saw it on the train as, we, as he passed by here, because we picked him up at the station in LA. And uh, needless to say, he was surprised. <laughs> but it's still in the family. Still in the family. I have my brother and sister, and uh, my nephew still live here in the house. Boy, this whole place is frozen in time. It's, when you come here, in reality, you go back in time. You really do. I have a, a lot of my uh, uh, dairy associates, you know, friends, you get some of these old, the old timers that had dairies years back that they knew of, they knew my dad and, and knew the family. They come back here and to reminisce of, uh, of what they had and, and what they miss. It's just part of history, really. Okay, this has really been something. And we're standing here with your designer cow dairy hats on. This is a new marketing tool you've established, isn't it? I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got a bottle, a quart bottle of this wonderful homemade chocolate milk in a glass bottle. And it's wonderful. You can't beat it in glass. It's the real thing. <laughs> now you got all your employees out here for just a minute. I guess the question is, how hard is it to compete with the big dairies, with the big boys? Well, with the big boys, it's, it, you know, we have our own special niche, I guess you could say, and we have our own special uh, demand for our product. And, you know, with quality, there's always a little demand for quality, and the smaller guy, I honestly, God, really think the smaller guy does it better. Do you think your milk's better? I know it's better. <laughs> because, you know, I, I've always told everybody, I won't sell it if I won't drink it, yeah. and I'll drink everything here. Boy, so will I. You better get me out of here. I'm going to put you out of business. But you can get this in the big stores, can't you? You, yes. you can get Broguer's milk in? In uh, stores such as Pavilions, Bristol Farms, uh, Whole Foods, uh, Selected Hughes, your Gelson's, your Mayfair, uh, Selected Ralph's, Selected Lucky's. So it's around. You just have to look for the glass bottle. That's what sets yours apart. Okay, that was a year ago. We're now back on the scene. Nothing much has changed. I'm still holding a bottle of chocolate milk, and I want to tell you, Ray, that I have been to the supermarket many times since that first visit to have some of your chocolate milk. It is wonderful. Thank you. It's, we, we get a lot of good response on that. We really do. It's one of our, all our products are premier, but this one is right there, right above, and I'm sure as you know, we're here for another reason today. <laughs> we're here for another reason. Now, we got to get the ceremonies out of the way because last time, 
we were here, you gave Louie and you gave me those cow hats. Correct. You've kind of uh, notched things down a little bit. These are not quite as, they don't make quite the statement that the cow hat did. No, they don't. And what, what happened was the, uh, the supplier quit making that particular hat. Oh. So that was the end of that. <laughs> so those cow hats we had before are now collector's, collector's items. Collector's item, that's correct, yeah. All right, now how's business? Business is still doing good here? Oh, yeah, here? business is fine. I'm Selling uh, the eggs selling and the, the milk? Egg, the milk, uh, the chocolate, and now uh, as we enter the holiday season, the, uh, the eggnog now we start uh, producing all the time now. The eggnog, that's what we're here for because we're all getting into this holiday spirit. And the eggnog is a tradition here at Brogares too, isn't it? That it is. It, uh, we actually get calls for it all year, all year long. The, uh, after you try it, you'll, you'll know. You'll know why people want it. But it's one that is a traditional one that usually we start the last week of October. Uh -huh. Possibly even the week before uh, Thanksgiving. And then you go right into? All the way to New Year's. All right, well, let me put this chocolate milk back up because if you know if I don't, I'll drink it right here on the spot. <laughs> you will, too. Oh. <laughs> I've seen you in action. All right, <laughs> and I would take the hat, and we're going to go back inside where we were. There's some of that cow motif you oh, still yeah, got. Oh, yeah, we moved it over to the, took it off the hats and moved it on the walls now. <laughs> I like this. Okay, we're going inside to look at the eggnog into the inner sanctums. Oh boy, the old gang is all still here. All of the guys, these are the same guys who were here a year ago a year when we ago, were here. Right, that's correct. I told you everybody loves it here. <laughs> all right, fellas, we're going to do a demonstration on how you're making your eggnog. So, Ray, tell us how this gets started, and you can go ahead and be doing it. Okay, you can see right now we have John pouring in the, uh, it's the ice cream uh, soft serve is basically what it is. You could almost make a malt out of this. It's that thick. The, uh, we have that one special made up with really some special ingredients and the extra cream for extra thickness. Oh boy, that is thick, thick, thick. Stuff. That is, it is. Okay, it's far so thicker than what you'll find in, the, in anybody else's brand, really. So you just put these bags full right in the cans. Correct. That's step number one. Step number one. Step number okay, one. Okay, we got step number one. Now, what's step number two? You got another fellow over here working on step number two. Yeah, step number two, that's the eggnog base itself. That is all the ingredients, the nutmeg, the, the spices, the everything that goes with it. The, all the flavors mixed into one. Any secret ingredients in there? There actually is. Actually, that, that one there, this particular one is from a formula that's better than 75 years old. All right, let's pour that in there. Oh, boy. Oh, and there's the guy with the mixer. Look at here, Louis. This is the same. Yeah. That's the real, now that's the whole thing we right there. We stir those up by hand. Thing mixed right. That's correct. Look at it, Louis. It's getting mixed. Let me turn it around so we can get him looking down in there. Go ahead and mix it a little bit. Yeah. Now, that's getting real thick, too. Isn't it, it is. As, it, as the ingredients blend up together, it all starts, you know, coming together, I guess you could all say. All right, so he, you do all of this by hand, and then, well, you're, you're, I mean, so you're just mixing these cans all day long. That's correct. Okay, then what happens to it? Well, then they'll take it after the product is mixed up just right, and we'll pour it into the tank. All and right, there's so an ag agitator going on there to keep the, the nutmeg and everything that we use in there flowing. Okay, we're ready to pour it. I know that's easy to say. That's a heavy can. <laughs> Oh, boy. Now, how much eggnog do you sell every holiday season? Well, every year we sell just a little bit more. What we found is that it's always word of mouth. People try it, they, uh, they tell another, and every year the sales grow. I think last year we did right around 9,000 gallons. You ever run out of eggnog? Oh, we run out of eggnog many a time, <laughs> yeah. So fellas, do you all like it when the holidays get here or do you dread having to make all this eggnog? I don't dread it, it's fun. It is? It goes by fast. You get sick of eggnog after a while? No, nah, not, too, not too much, because it's so... sick of it? Never. Love it. I love it. No. You like it? Oh, I've been doing it for a long time, so sometimes I do get sick of it. <laughs> and you like it too. Oh, yeah. So these fellas are well fed. They're well nourished on the job. They are, and uh, usually about the last batch that we make, though, they're usually a little, <laughs> a little tired. <laughs>
All right, let's pour one more batch in, and then we're going to go out front and taste this stuff. Oh, boy. OK, we're out front. We're standing here with Julio and Eddie, and you've got your granddaughter and her friend here today. Correct. you got the whole crowd here. And fellas, you're out front right on the firing line out oh, yeah. here. How much eggnog, I mean, do you sell a lot of eggnog every year? Oh, yeah, I was so plenty. Like, I was telling you that some lady was fighting with us because we were out of eggnog. And she she liked, didn't like that. She didn't like that because she called and uh, she said she was coming from real far. And she said, and we had some eggnog, but by the time she came here, it we all ran out. So. Uh oh, wait a minute! Oh, yeah. You're running out of eggnog. Yeah, there's times where that does happen because you know you you get a lot of people come in, they'll buy more than just one. I mean, they'll sit there and literally buy it by the case. Yeah. During the holiday time, especially Christmas time, many many people buy it and, and actually give it as gifts. So wait a minute, we're we're are we getting ourselves into something here? Because we're <laughs> encouraging people to come out and buy it. And these poor guys are going to be on the front line here catching all the wrath of people if you're out of eggnog. There'll be no wrath this year. I, uh, we've stepped up the production. <laughs> I don't see any shortage. I really don't. All right. We got it down to a science. It took us 50 years, but we got it there. I'm going to take a taste because I come from a long line. The Hauser family had a long tradition of eggnog. Oh, boy. This is excellent. Excellent. Thank you. The Hauser recipe, I wouldn't swear by it, but I think there was a little bit of Jack Daniels <laughs> thrown in there. <laughs> we can't do that by law. <laughs> but that is allowable. It kind of adds that extra little, true. little touch to Ru it. Rumor, rumor has it around here, you know, around the holiday time, a 10-gallon can will get done like that. But yeah, <laughs> I bet. Well, this has been a lot of fun. I would recommend that you come by the dairy anytime. Uh, just to visit with uh, the people here, the family here, and see what an old-time bottling place uh, looks like. Uh, but especially during the holiday season, this eggnog is worth the drive. Now, is this in stores as well? Yes, it is. It's in uh, supermarkets such as uh, Pavilions, uh, Bristol Farms, uh, some bonds, stores like that. Oh boy! See how it just coats the bottle. I mean, oh man! When you drink, it doesn't. The bottle doesn't turn clear right away. It coats. That is that oh, thick. Oh man! This is the best. And the next day, I'm telling you, Hugh, after it sits up for a day, it's, it just really the, everything comes together. It's thicker. You'll let, tomorrow. You take some home today. We're gonna make sure you do, I and you're gonna it. you'll drink it all tomorrow. I don't know whether this is gonna last <laughs> till tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks a lot. Nice Thank to you. meet you girls. Good luck, fellas. Right. Get ready for that onslaught of KCET viewers who are going to be coming here wanting eggnog. Oh, yes. Be All ready right. for them. Got him. Very All ready. right. That's the way it is. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. From Montebello, enjoy the eggnog. It's delicious. Huel, you want to know how good this eggnog is? We had it in the LA Fair a couple years back. Perfect score being 100. They gave us 101. 101? 101. The judges like the taste of it, the flavor, everything so much. We got one extra point. My understanding at it is really rare when they do that in the judging at the LA County Fair. That says a lot. Visiting with Huell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.